are super excited to tell you an announcement. Um, yeah. I feel like we need a drum roll. This is not a typical podcast in that we're not going to do a teaching or a deep conversation, but we just want to tell y'all about something that we're very, very excited about, something we've waited years to um, announce. And we are in the filmmaking industry now. Okay, that might be a dramatic way of saying it, but we're going to be uh, producing a documentary that we feel like is going to have tremendous kingdom impact. And we want to tell you about it and help you feel a part of what we are stepping into in hopes that you will, um, at very minimum, be excited about watching it as soon as it comes out and helping us uh, get it distributed to more people. But also, we'd love for you to help us produce it. And so I want Johnny to just tell you a little bit of just a snapshot of the backstory and why we're doing a documentary and what it's about. Yeah, you know, for perhaps about 12 years, we have been uh, speaking into this theme of Reformation, Seven Mountains, the Seven Mountain Mandate, the essential idea that God is big and great enough to show up, not just in, in, in church and in good meetings. We love that. We want that to keep happening. And He's not just a God that saves souls. We want to keep seeing that and heals bodies and 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 all 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 those uh, all, awesome all those parts awesome of yeah who yeah our God is yeah. but he's a God capable of extending his influence and his power into every area of society, and so we've told this story um, you know multiple times. If people have been at certain conferences, if we have enough time, we tell the story of Peru and of Sapulsoa, and and we've told of how God brought change to a city, then a region, and then it really was catalytic towards the whole nation going from a 70% extreme poverty rate to 4% in a period of about 10 to 12 years as well. And we believe there's the next level of transformation ready for... I mean, uh, you just breezed over that so fast. That is unheard of. In 10 to 12 years for a nation that was, that was very much a third world yeah. nation went from 70% poverty rate, extreme poverty rate, to 4%. And this is all very documented. Right. We have the documentation on it. And, um, and so, yeah, it's the extreme poverty rate, which is, you know, it's like, I don't know what it is, a dollar a day, uh, people living off of that. And so that part of it uh, has been phenomenal. The Christian population doubled in that same time period, but it really wasn't through revivals. It really was through God being so uh, good in society and people recognizing it conditions the heart of people to turn to Him. So we've been telling that story and people have been excited about it, but we're now, um, we're now so excited, Elizabeth saying, going into the filmmaking where we don't just tell you, you go, I wonder if that's really true. We're going to have this documented. I'm about to go back to Peru next week. Yeah, so by the time they hear this, you'll already have been on this trip. He's going, yes. going down there to the same region, Sapasoa, Peru. And we're taking a, a young filmmaker with us. And Seth Russo, who Seth we're so Russo, excited he's amazing. about working with. And, um, and so we're going to tell the story. We're going to find the mayor that we initially um, hooked up with 20 years ago. Well, next year will be 20 years. And, and let, uh, you know, let the cameras and the people there tell the story that yeah. we've been telling and yeah. the evidence of it. And again, it's designed to uh, brag on God, not totally. on us and what we were able to do, but just that we were, we were compelled by the Lord and what he was showing us uh, to believe that he could uh, step beyond the four walls of the church and do amazing things. And so we believe it really is going to uh, be a visual, a story, a compelling story that uh, is catalytic towards seeing our own faith expanded, extended, under, where we have an understanding, okay, what are we talking about when we're saying God can transform society, reform society? What does that look like? Right. And it's just going to be one of the stories, and yeah. we're going to tell, you know, connecting stories to it, but it's it's... It's the idea itself. It's the faith. It's the confidence in a big God, and then the evidence and the proof and and sustain. Now yeah. we're talking about a twenty-year history that we'll be speaking into before it's yeah. over. And so, not just like okay, two months there was, uh, you know, we had a great event, and for two months people were 
and unity and there was uh, and crime was went down for two or three months those are all great stories as well um, uh, to tell of, of God doing something that was uh, phenomenal over a limited period of time but we want to uh, speak into a sustained yeah uh, this is going to be different yeah. in that way that this is going to show a sustained uh, something that was set into motion and you know we talk about the kingdom of God coming to earth we talk about bringing heaven to earth and as a generation we're understanding more and more what that exactly means we've begun to understand it means being healed body mind and spirit and we we've begun to contend for that as a generation what does it look like when when God's healing comes to our bodies and to walk in that level of power but I believe we're, we're really also pioneering into kind of the next expression of the goodness of God. What does heaven look like coming to earth on a societal level in every area of culture? And we're going to really use this story to begin delving into those, those discoveries and some of the breakthrough that we've already begun to see in this amazing nation of Peru. One of the things that I think is going to be very unique about the documentary is it's kind of a parallel story going on. It is, as you've been saying, it is the greatness of God on display. What does the goodness of God look like when we, just as ordinary people, because we took ourselves, we're very ordinary, and some of our friends and family on ordinary trips in and out of Peru and many other nations, but Peru is the one we're highlighting. What does it look like when we partner with God? And, and you literally like take time off work, you save up your money, you go. And what's the mentality that you go in with that brings reformation and change? What, is, what are we looking to agree with God on? And then how does that practically look? And, and the story makes it so, um, so tangible, the, the way it's told and how we're going to get this parallel story of what God's been doing in the nation of Peru, but what he was doing in your heart. And, you know, we've told Seth, we want this documentary not to be the story of Johnny and Lowe and how awesome he is. I would love to create that documentary. Oh, that's wow. That's one. amazing. Okay. <laughs> but we want it to showcase the greatness of our God. But yeah. in that, God chooses people to partner with. And, and he partners with certain ways of thinking and certain steps of faith, et cetera. And so it's, it's not just your story because it began with your parents. Yeah. And so this other parallel story that will yeah. be going on at the same time is the fact that you were born and raised in yeah. this area of Peru. Yeah. And your parents were missionaries there yeah. for over 50 years. Yeah. And they gave their yes to God in such a way that opened a door for you and other members of your family that travel and minister in Peru mm -hmm. um, to go and like pick up where your parents left off yeah. and to take these seeds of revival and see them sprout into the fruitfulness of reformation. Yeah, that's good. And so I'm, I'm just excited. You know, we're on the front end of this. Johnny's only done a couple of brief interviews with our, our, um, filmmaker Filming. with Seth and so he and Seth are about to um, and we're so excited how God's already provided the money for this first leg of the journey but they're going down to Peru they're gonna find um, many of the people that that were key players in the 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 prophetic unfolding of of this reformation of Peru we're calling it the great Peruvian miracle and actually, I think someone else termed it that That's way actually, in the media, in the news. Yeah, that was not even a, a, a spiritual terminology. It's been called the Great Peruvian Economic Miracle. Economic Miracle, The shift yeah. and change that's taking place in that nation over a 10-year period. And so, uh, you know, for us, it really becomes illustrative of what we're talking about. It's, yeah. That's why this yeah. documentary is important. It's an illustration yeah. of what it looks like because people want to know, well, what does it look yeah. like? And we yeah. want to build on this. Yeah. We believe that this is going to be the first of many documentaries. I don't know that we're going to make the others, but I believe there will be countless um, filming. Not You know, we're used to seeing these these moments in time which are just mind-blowing of where someone will lay hands on someone who's maybe in a wheelchair and they get up and walk and we want to see that and we're drawn to that supernatural power of God and there's a part of us that like is this too good to be true 
we want this to be the first of many documentaries that does that on an international level. Like, is this too good to be true? Did God really do that? Like, like we can just hear God's heart and speak it, and then it comes to pass, and you can see a, a, a corruption in government begin to shift and change. And, and there wasn't like this great prayer movement that was behind it that, that we can directly connect it to. Of course, there's been a lot of prayer and intercessors sowing into that nation for generations. Yeah. But, but, but in this immediate context of the story, it, it literally was people hearing God's heart and prophesying it and then God just coming behind it yeah. Without giving the story away, right. that's all we can really say yeah. about it. Yeah, and it's an invitation for the body of Christ to uh, even embrace a new narrative because we've had a narrative that things are, are getting worse and they're going to get bad enough real soon where we sort of have to uh, go underground and hide and go into caves and button. Or you know, just focus on souls. we got to just get souls saved. And, and this wasn't an, a nation that knew that was consciously aware. It wasn't like all the pastors banded together and no, said, let's see aware. our economy no. change and all of that. This was the heart of God hovering over a nation that his heart is for in the same way that his heart is for the individuals in that nation. And he, he's been continually moving on the hearts of missionaries and locals there to, to bring salvation to individual hearts and lives. But the same God who's good and loving and kind. He, he's been brooding over this nation to see, the, to, to respond to the cries of the hearts of the people, those who know God and those who do not, those who have a relationship with Jesus and those who do not, but they all have this in common. They were crying out under the poverty, the, the intense poverty of, of, not, of having so much lack. And God saw an open door to answer the cries of people's heart and his love and kindness to bring change. And then at the same time, you see, um, this is part of the punchline, but would, didn't you say that there was like a significant change in salvation yeah. experience during that same time yeah. period? And yeah. not directly attributed to any one crusade or anything, no. but this this premise that that when we experience something shift and change in our environment, it acclimates our hearts to believe that there is a God. He does exist. He does love me. And that becomes the environment. The reformation of society creates the environment for revival, where people's hearts become hungry and acclimated towards a good God. Okay, so we just said a lot. We want to invite you to come on this journey with us and pray for us, begin to talk about it. We're excited about the buzz around this. And um, you can find out more details and how to get involved by going to our website, restore7, the number 7.org, restore7.org. And there will be a link on there for you to go to a GoFundMe page where you can read details, you can watch a promotional video. Uh, we'll be keeping this updated with um, little teasers as the documentary is being filmed and you can hear about the process and the progress of it. And if you feel moved in your heart to um, give financially to this, we are in the process of raising $50,000. Currently, as of today, we have a little under 2000 towards that. Um, and we're, we're buying equipment and there's just a lot of expense involved. We're going to be going back down to Peru at least two more times after this trip. We want to do this film with excellence. We want to do it in a way that's fresh and innovative and creative. That's where Seth comes in with his expert team. And um, we want it to be something that you'll want to show your friends, your family, people that, um, that may not even have a relationship with Jesus and, and be proud to show them something that, that is an expression of our generation's belief in a big God who is loving and kind and has plans for his, not just his sons and daughters, but for the nations. So, yeah, so we're excited about this. Yeah. So go to restore7.org and see how you can get involved.